Hey everybody, <clears throat> it's Justice for Comics. It is Thursday evening. I'm out back here. A uh, nice little breeze is starting to blow. We're getting into a little bit better weather down here in Florida. Not quite fall weather, but it's not as humid as it's been. Um, so yeah, I'll wait, I'll wait a little bit here for a few more people to join the podcast. Or the live stream, rather. Looks like I may have two people that have joined. Get my cigar started here. All right. <clears throat> Got a few books I'll show. Hey Perry, what's up, buddy? You cut or punch? I do a punch. I'll cut if it's a like torpedo, right? I'll cut that, but um, usually on these rounded ones, I'll I'll punch. So I got one of those lighters with the built-in punch at the bottom. So I mean, these are this is a cheap lighter too. This, this is the best lighter. It's a Jetline lighter. It's only like twelve bucks. I don't know. It lasts forever and. They, uh, they do a good job. I usually go about a year, a couple years with those, and then they finally give out. The uh, igniter probably goes eventually on it. So uh, just so you know, I'm smoking a Cuba, a Cuba Maduro. So it's darker. It's a darker acid. It's got a little bit of a, you know, a little teeny bit of sweet, sweet to, uh, sweet flavor to it. Um. Nice, easy, comfortable smoke. It's not real harsh. You never after I smoke one of these, I don't have like uh, I don't know that aftertaste of smoking a really bad cigar. <laughs> so they're usually pretty smooth. So Perry, Perry's in. Uh, you're in Tampa as well. What what part of Tampa are you in, Terry? Are you gonna or Perry? Are you gonna give that away or no? I'm up in the North Tampa, uh, Lutz or Lutz, depending on, uh, you're in, oh, you're in Riverview. Okay. So you're South. I used to go fishing with a buddy down at Apollo beach. And I remember going, going kind of through Riverview, uh, off of 41. What was the name of that fishing spot? I think it was called Cockroach Bay. Hey, BTC Moon Guy. Welcome to the live stream. Happy Thursday to you. So I am i don't know. I think I'm going to do this every Thursday. I'll just, you know, come out here and light up a cigar. And I'm, I'm drinking a little um, a little whiskey. <laughs> little uh, Gentleman Jack, right? So I've been doing bourbons quite a bit, but um, I don't know. Once in a while, I'll do a good Jack Daniels. And I was at the liquor store today, and they had a really good sale on Gentleman Jack, so I decided to pick that up. So, Perry, you're down in Riverview, Brandon area. Yeah, that's – I shouldn't complain about the traffic up here because um, every time I'm down in Brandon, man, that road was at 60, I think. I used to go to a comic book shop down there. I haven't been I haven't been down there in a long time, off of sixty. And you're what are you drinking? Buffalo Trace. Yeah, somebody recommended that to me the other day. It's I think that's hard to find too. Yeah, sixty is a bitch. Yeah, I mean I I I definitely didn't travel on it during uh, during rush hour. I think that's really bad on rush hour, but. You know, I'd go there sometimes during the middle of the day, like lunchtime. I, a lot of times that shop wouldn't open till like noon, if I if I remember correctly. And yeah, it would still take me a while to get down that road. Just even in the middle of the day, just lunch lunch traffic, it would be stop and go the whole way. But where I live, it's going to be like that too. Um, outskirts of Tampa are growing like crazy. Where I live, they've got development after development. Uh, there's lots of construction. But the first year or two I lived here, uh, I had my tires going flat all the time. I'd be running over 
nails. I think one year I had two or three two or three um, nails in my tires because of that stupid construction. So yeah, there's a lot of construction up here. I'm sure they're everywhere in Florida. You see it, but North Tampa, there's a lot lately. A lot of construction. You design a roof and floor trusses. Wow, cool. I've got a um, I got a client in the building industry. I think the builder is called Tibbets, or they're a, I think they're a construction materials provider called Tibbets. They're up here in North Tampa. Um, so if I want to know what's going on in the building industry, I usually just ask him. He he usually is pretty well connected. Kind of tells me what's going on in the in the building industry. So we got five. Looks like we have five looking on right now. Only two chatting. So what's going on, guys? Um, any interesting comic books that you picked up this week? Um, I order mine usually monthly through Midtown, so I I don't go to the comic book shop on a weekly basis. Which I know there's some downsides to not doing that. Just uh, where I live, there's not. And I probably would go way more often if there was one near me. But where I live in Tampa. There's not a lot of comic book shops near where I live. I think the closest one is like a 35-minute drive. So I'd probably go more often if it was more convenient. BTC Moon Guy says, the Comic Con here this weekend, also the second show, Dream Saturday. Yeah. So New York Comic Con, right, is this weekend, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, Perry Comics says the Ghost Rider was good. Some people comparing it to Immortal Hulk, but that's just what I hear. Yeah, I did pick up. Um, by the way, just got it in the mail. I did pick up that um, Absolute Carnage Symbiote of Vengeance. That is the scan variant, um, limited to. 600, I got number 598. Man, I would have been awesome if I got the 600. I always want to get either number one or the last issue. <laughs> I've, it's never happened to me yet. All the exclusives I buy, you think it would happen to me, but um, 598, I was damn close. Big cool if I could get either the last issue or the first issue of, of, a, uh, of an exclusive, but yeah, it didn't happen. Oh, well. Yeah, so uh, New York Comic Con, I think... My good friend Esteban Salinas is going to be there. Um, I believe he's at the con this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. And by the way, I'm I'm going to be on Jim's Comics channel on Tuesday. Him and I are going to do a live stream. I think Tuesday, we've kind of narrowed it down to Tuesday. I don't know exactly the time yet. Uh, Jim's in – what is he in? He's up in – Near British Columbia, Canada. I know he's up in Canada. He's so he's on Pacific Standard Time, and I'm on Eastern Standard Time. So uh, we're going to try to coordinate a time on Tuesday, but we're going to do a live stream. We're going to have Esteban Salinas on on the live stream with us. So he'll be phoning in. Um, I don't think he'll do FaceTime, but I, I'd be awesome if he could do Face. You know, if he could join our stream, that'd be great, and we could see you know see what he looks like and all that. But at, at the very least, he's going to be calling in. Uh, we also might have Nick uh, from from Key Collector Comics. I know a lot of people subscribe to that um, that app, so we'll have. I think we're going to have him on the on the podcast, which I understand he was in New York Comic Con this weekend, and he's doing a presentation, so that should be cool. All right, what else is going on in the chat here? Uh, Gabriel says, Hey man, did you get any of the comic con exclusives? Um, I did comic mint had a amazing Spider-Man number one, Shannon Mayer exclusive. It's a black and white, uh, image with her holding the mask of Spider-Man and, and only the mask is colored. The rest is all black and white. Really cool. It's, it's only limited to a thousand. Last time I checked, which was, I think late yesterday, they still had some for sale. It's limited to a thousand, so check it out. Uh, the comicmint.com is the website. So um, 
I, of all the exclusive, that's that's one of my favorite was the the Shannon Mayer Amazing Spider-Man number one. So check that out. It's a pretty cool. Uh, and I know they had a trade dress in a, in a Virgin earlier, which I missed. I didn't end up getting that. Uh, it sold out. Um, but the splash page one looks cool, and it's it's only thirty dollars. So that's the, that's the one I'm picking up. Uh, let's see here. Comics Club, thanks for joining the, the live stream. At work but not working. That sounds like me. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I got a new logo for the comic book pusher. Nice. Oh, by the way, I changed the logo. I'm going to start changing my logo. I don't know if everybody can see that on my channel, but I changed the logo to Orion Brown. I don't know if that's Frankenstein or just some zombie. It looks like maybe just a zombie, but it's. A, I mean, if you go on Ryan Brown's Ryan Brown's Instagram page. It's a freaking awesome image. It's creepy as hell. He's a really good art. I mean, I tell you, I like his art. I I bought that Thor um, that Marvel Zombies Thor cover that he did. I just bought that. That looks really really good. Uh, I can't wait to get that. That looks really good. Uh, Comics Club says, what are we drinking tonight? Um, I'm drinking Gentleman Jack and Coke. So Jack and Coke, yeah, it's kind of basic. That's nothing special. Uh, BTC Moon Guy, am I on Twitter? Yes. I believe usually when I post something on Instagram, I'll tag it to Twitter. So I am on Twitter under Justice for Comics. So yep, I'm on Twitter. I don't I don't do a lot of tweeting. I, I usually will post stuff on Instagram and do YouTube channels. That's pretty much what I do. Yeah. So speaking of Shannon Mayer, I'll show that um, I finally got this man. I ordered this back in I think May. I ordered this back in May and I just got it. Um, I. Couldn't get it at Comic Mint. There was a couple sites in the U.S. that were selling it, and I just didn't. I didn't jump on it real fast, unfortunately, and it sold out. So I, I bought this on Seven Eight Nine Comics uh, in the U.K. and you know they're real nice. They're a great shop, and what they'll do is if you order multiple stuff from them, they'll say, "Hey, do you want to combine shipping? We'll refund you the shipping on the last purchase." So I go, "Yeah." So I mean, I saved like I saved like twenty. I mean, I ordered a lot of stuff from them. I probably saved. By doing that, I probably saved like $25 in shipping costs. I kept saying, yeah, go ahead, add it, add it. So this was back in May <laughs> that I ordered this. And I just finally got it. So that's the downside of combining shipping is they're kind of holding the book for you uh, while your other books are, are being released, and then they're sending them all at once. <laughs> so I got like I got like 10 books sent to, 10 or 12 books sent to me all at the same time. Um, so it did save me a lot of money shipping, but I had to wait, you know. Not a good idea if you want to flip a book, which I don't flip too many books. Uh, I usually just buy and hold. Uh, once in a while, if I see something um, that looks like an easy flip, I'll do that. But that's not a good website uh, to use if you want to flip a book, in my opinion. You got to keep a good draw on the cigar, otherwise it'll go out. All right. BTC Moon Guy, thank you for following me on Twitter. Good man. Uh, Comics Club says Dead Eyes was my favorite read this week. Didn't get the chance to read it when it was Dead Rabbit. I did. I picked up all the Dead Rabbit covers, by the way. Incentive, regular, all of them. And when I heard it was getting canceled, I was like, shit, that was good. It was a really, really good comic. Uh, the writing was excellent. Artwork is awesome. And I really, really liked it. So I think this Dead Eyes... Changing the name isn't going to do nothing. I, I I think it's fine that they change the name. Dead Eyes is fine with me. I, you know, Dead Rabbit, some bar. All right, you got it. I, I, why wouldn't the bar allow the, the comic book? I think the bar is stupid. First of all, no, no one really cares if a comic book is the same name as your bar. If anything, the comic book will help promote your bar, right? I don't know how they don't think that. Uh, that's the way I would think. Uh, if anything, I would probably have the comic book's up in the bar highlighting hey not only are we a bar called dead rabbit but there's a comic book called dead rabbit too check it out i mean 
That's what I would have done. I wouldn't have tried to sue Todd McFarlane. Yeah, they're fucking stupid. That's my opinion on that. So fuck Dead Rabbit Bar. I, I think at this point I wouldn't go to them. <laughs> I think if I had a free drink there, I wouldn't even go. Uh, so ridiculous. So what else is going on? Sorry, I went on a little rant there. <laughs> I decided to uh, unleash on Dead Rabbit Bar. I think I think they're in, they're in Chicago. If I remember right, I think I heard they were in Chicago. I'm not too sure. Hey, we're up to 10 people checking out the live stream. That's awesome. Uh, of you 10 people, don't be afraid to chime in and chat. Say hello. Uh, love to hear from everybody. Um, yeah, we got some cool things to talk about. Hey, thanks. Thanks for joining Manny, the comic collector. Manny is always posting on my Instagram posts, so he's a good man. He's always making a comment or saying, hey, that's fire. He's a good man. I like Manny. And I need to check out more um, more people's U YouTube channels. I don't get as much time to watch a lot of them. But I need to keep up on that. Yeah, dress up like the Dead Eyes for Halloween. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, what was it, Facebook? I think I either saw it on Facebook or Instagram. People have been posting um, videos of I guess they have these masks for Halloween and they light up like a neon and they change. I think they, they change. And there's also that Rorschach um, mask that you can buy that changes, you know, it changes the, uh, the image, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, just, the costumes are getting crazy. My son, every year we have to like look for his costume a couple months in advance. We, we have to try to figure out what he wants. And uh, it's just a big, it's a big pain in the ass. I think this year he's going to be a, some Assassin's Creed character. I don't know. All I know is he's got a sword. He loves swords. So he's always he's always pulling out this plastic sword and beating me with it. <laughs> so uh, my, my son's into swords and soccer. That's, that's what he's into. <laughs> so I, I'm constantly, you can see here, I'll show everybody. Here's my back. See all the balls? See all the balls out there? Uh, so I'm either throwing a ball with him constantly or I'm kicking a ball with him um, uh, pr on pretty much a daily basis. And he's in soccer. He's in a big soccer league and all that stuff. So, yeah, maybe he'll be a professional. I don't know. He's, he loves soccer, though. I'll tell you that much. A kid loves to run. Hey, welcome, Agent J.R. Ewing. I love that name, Agent J.R. Ewing. <laughs> Only people... 40 years and up are probably going to get that reference, JR. The, the Dallas, the Dallas reference. The millennials are like, who the hell is JR Ewing? <laughs> the, us old guys know who that is. BTC Moon Guy says, have you ever checked out the Doctor Strange Pink Floyd Saucer Full of Secrets album cover? Wow. No, I haven't. I mean, I'm a Pink Floyd fan. I'm surprised I don't. Surprised I don't know that cover. Obviously, I have Dark Side of the Moon. I've got The Wall, Animals. What else do I have? I've got four or five of the albums. Wish You Were Here. I got several of them. I don't remember that album. I'll have to check that out. All right. Good suggestion. Strange Tales 158. All right. I'll take, the, I'll take a look at that, BTC Moon Guy. Thank you for the suggestion. Pre 1970. Yeah, it's going. So I was more into the Pink Floyd from probably the wall onward, right? That's probably um, – back in the day, I loved that song, Learning to Fly. That was like a – that was a big – I remember all my uh, classmates. I was not a real um, – I was not a, a, a marijuana user <laughs> when I was in high school. I was a good boy. I was raised very religious. Um but a lot of my buddies, a lot of my friends were smoking pot all the time. And they were always listening to Pink Floyd. <laughs> they would go over to these. And I remember going with them one time to a laser light show in, in Miami. And they had Pink Floyd. They played Pink Floyd in Nine Inch Nails. And it was it was awesome. With I mean, with I got high probably just from being there because everyone was lighting it up. <laughs> so just being in the vicinity, I uh, 
I got a nice high, but yeah, it was that was some good times. I remember that. All right. Yes, yeah, Shine On You, Crazy Diamond. That's a great song. Awesome song. Perry, I'm not surprised you were a stoner in high school. Half the time I watch you on those podcast on those live streams with uh, with Just a Rican, and I think you're stoned half the time I'm I'm watching you. Uh, let's see, Jim Comic posted something oh, on Powers of X. Yeah, he posted. I guess in Powers of X, uh, there's supposed to be a reveal of who the Red King is. One theory is that it's um, Kitty Kitty Pride. The other theory is that it's Omega Red. Obviously, it makes a little bit more sense if it's Omega Red being the Red King. That makes a little bit more sense. Um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, well, I, I don't know that it's definitive yet. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Okay, Perry's comics says I have to slow down the stream live streams. Yes, you need to. <laughs> Good old Perry. What's funny is. Um, just, just a Rican must love you, Perry, because he never asks me to go on his show. <laughs> so you know he's got another Tampa guy available to him if he wants to go on his po on his podcast. But he always chooses you. So hey, man, you bring something to the podcast. They love you. They don't want me. I'm available for Just a Rican, and uh, he goes, "No, we're good. <laughs> we're good. We got Perry." I'm like, "Okay." So man, you're you're in, man. You're in. You're in the uh, the in crowd. Uh, yeah, he's Perry's got blackmail pits. Yeah, exactly. He's he's got just a Rican doing something inappropriate, maybe. So I'm hoping that um, my live stream with Jim's comics will propel me. In fact, Jim's comics comment to me is I'll read this right off of his po his his text message to me. <laughs> uh, what did he say? Yes, yeah, so we confirmed the date. We're like, yeah, let's do Tuesday. And he goes, uh, you are going mainstream now. <laughs> so he, he thinks that by me being on his podcast, it's going to propel me to, into the stratosphere as far as subscribers. I'm at like 540-something subscribers, so I'm still, I'm still small time compared to Jim's comics. But uh, he thinks me going on his podcast is, or his live stream is going to, knock me up into the um make me mainstream yeah we'll see comments club asked me what is your local shop yeah i, mean, I was just saying that i don't <sighs> there's a, there's one guy in tampa that i don't care for that much he's a, kind of a depending on his, his mood i mean i go in there sometimes and he's real nice to me and other times he's a fucking dick so <sighs> that's Part of the problem sometimes with these comic book shop guys, you know, when I grew up in Naples, I grew up in Naples, Florida, which you know, since the age of seven, Naples is this nice little retirement place down in South Florida. A um, lot of rich people. Um, my grandfather was a wealthy guy. He moved down. He retired down there on the water in the 1970s. He retired at 55 years old. You ever seen that show Mad Men? Mad Men? Uh, Don Draper? You know, he's fucking the secretaries and he's smoking well he's you know he's smoking in his office drinking drinking bourbon and scotch all the time and you know, that was my grandfather my grandfather was don draper i'm sure he had women you know he loved my grandmother you know they were they were married forever but he was he was an advertising executive and he retired at like 52 years old with a bunch of money and he bought a place on the water down in naples for I mean, back in back in the day, I think he bought it in seventy one or seventy two, around the around the age that I was born. I think he paid eighty thousand dollars for the land <laughs> and, and the house and everything. And today, that property is worth about four to five million dollars. So, you know, it's crazy. So that's how I ended up in Naples. My family moved down there because my grandfather moved down there. He was a retired wealthy advertising executive. So. Yeah, Draper's the man. <laughs> that was a that was an interesting show. I mean, near the end it got a little crazy, but it brought back. You know, it was kind of nice because I would watch and I would think of my grandfather because that's kind of what he did. And my grandfather was good friends with uh, Jim Henson. He was buddies with Jim Henson, and he was really good friends with uh, what was that guy? T 
Tim Conway, the, the dwarf guy, the dwarf golf. I don't know if you guys remember him. He was really good friends with my grandfather. So there's pictures of him and everything. It's pretty funny. Just a weekend. Thanks for coming to the podcast, buddy. Um, yeah, what kind of cigar is that? It's our, uh, I don't have any problems with it. it, it I act. I react well to it. So, and I'm drinking Gentleman Jack and Coke. So, in case anybody's wondering. All right, I gotta go back to the podcast. I gotta go back in the chat here. I missed a few people. Uh, welcome, Vu Hong. Thanks for coming, buddy. Thanks for joining the the stream. Agent Jr. Ewing says, "Doctor Strange, what do you think is next?" I guess his next title is, uh, what is it? Some surgeon, Doctor Strange, source, uh, Surgeon Supreme or something. I don't know. Maybe he's just going to operate more on people. I'm not too sure. Justin Rican says, Justice is a great guy. He came on the sh shout out show. Yeah. Hey, Justin Rican, I'm available more often, man. If you want to kick Perry off uh, or uh, one of your other, um, the other uh, agents of the four horsemen, if you want to kick one of those guys off, um, I can replace one of them, no problem. Comics Club says, yeah, acids are the best. Yeah, I mean, I, I've smoked $120 freaking Cohibas from, direct from Cuba. I mean, I've, I've been, let's put it this way. I was in the Bahamas and smoked a cigar rolled by Fidel's personal cigar roller. Kid you not. This was back in the late 90s. He was still alive. His personal cigar roller, Fidel Castro's. And he I he literally rolled a cigar for me at this the only there's only one five star restaurant in the Bahamas, and that's the one I was at. So anybody looks that up, they'll know which one it is. It is also the I think it's the oldest wine cellar in all of North America. Might might even be all of South America too. It's like I, I went into the wine cellar. They give you a tour of it, and it's it dates back to like I think like sixteen hundred something. I mean, it's freaking old. And the whole time I was down there, I was afraid that the ceiling was going to crash on me. I mean, it felt old, but I don't know. That was that was definitely an experience. Yeah. So how many people can say they smoked a cigar rolled by Fidel Castro's uh, personal cigar roller? <laughs> Not too many, probably. Yeah, I thought cigars were rolled in the thighs of dusky maidens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the gray man, I love that comment. Absolutely. There, what was the uh, – God, that brings – I always remember that line. It was from that TV show Night Court. You guys remember that TV show Night Court? In the dirtbag attorney, <laughs> the prosecuting attorney, uh, Dan. was his name? Dan. He, I remember the line. He always said that when he retires – he wants to be on a yacht eating caviar off the thighs of young virgins. <laughs> I always remember that line. I'm like, God, that's a damn good line. Whoever wrote that line is a genius. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> Just a Rican. Man, you always give me good props, Just a Rican. He always thinks I'm like the expert in comic books. All it is is just I'm old, man. I've been collecting comic books since I was 15 years old, and I'm getting close to 50, so the only reason I know some stuff is because I'm, you know, just age. You've been around a little while. That's all it is. All right, let's see uh, what else we got here. Yeah, Night Court. That's uh, a good show. I don't. That's not on Hulu or Netflix or anything. I, I'm like trying to figure out where where that's. I'm sure one of those streaming channels will will eventually carry it. Comics Club says, "Damn, you're you're so young." Yeah, right. I, I guess I'm young compared to some, right? Yeah, it's, it's always relative. Yeah, Miami Vice was another good show. Yeah, I, I definitely remember watching Miami Vice. I love that show. Crockett, I was so you were either a fan of Crockett or Tubbs, right? I like Crockett because he had that white Testarossa. He that black spider Ferrari was pretty nice too, right? Although everyone always says that wasn't really Ferrari. That was a Corvette that they modified um, to be a Ferrari, if I remember right. I don't know. So I remember something like that. 
But the white Testarossa, I love that car. That was the, so the last couple seasons of Miami Vice I thought were really, really good. First couple seasons, eh, it was all right. Last couple seasons were good, especially when Crockett goes bad and he's a villain for like a season and a season and a half. That that was good TV. I remember when they ended that season and, and Crockett was gone. They couldn't find him. Oh, man, I could not wait to watch uh, the next season. I, I totally remember that. That was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, every episode had an explosion explosion at the end. <laughs> That's true. The, the special effects guys back then, the uh, uh, the pyrotechnic guys probably did well back then, right? All those TV shows had all kinds of uh, stuff going on. I'm going to go turn the light on because it's getting a little dark out here. I'll be right back, guys. All right, I don't think that made too much difference. Maybe a little bit better. So I was showing off some comic books earlier. I wanted to show this one off too. Uh, Vamp number 20. This was a nice gift from my good friend Marcus. Uh, 1973 cover is by San Julian. Popping Frazetta style because when you look at this, you're like, oh, that's Frazetta cover. No, no, San Julian. So really, really cool looking cover. And then another one by San Julian, creepy, number fifty-one. Uh, that's a cover. Look at that thing. These things are mint condition too. These are like gradable. Do you know how hard it is to probably get a high grade in these in these books? And these things are like freaking nine fives, nine sixes, or better. I mean, they're. I mean, literally, they're like perfect. This might be a nine eight. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. So Marcus is a good man. I mean. He's awesome. He sends me some really good stuff sometimes. I, I need to send him out a nice care package as well. So I didn't keep the cigar up. Now I have to relight it. It's kind of dying on me here a little bit. All right. Regift to me. <laughs> Just a recon. Uh, welcome to the live stream comics for Thomas. Good man. I don't know if you're a subscriber of mine. Any, by anyways, if anyone hasn't subscribed to me, please hit the subscribe button. I would uh, really enjoy that if you did that. Helps me grow my channel. I usually reciprocate, you know, so if you're trying to grow your channel as well, I usually always uh, make sure I like the other person back as well. Uh, what else is going on in comic book uh, this week? Um, Absolute Carnage, I think, is kind of winding down, right? Um, I got that. I've been picking up that Miles Morales series of Absolute Carnage. I think that's been really good. You've got those nice Clayton Crane covers, so I've been picking that up. Um, that's been really, really good. Uh, what else? I think what else I picked up this week. I know it'll help me to remember. I'll, I'll go while I'm talking to you guys. I'll go on Midtown. And I'll just look at the books coming out next week. Of course, I do a video on this every every Wednesday. So check that out if you want to um, kind of see what I like and you know my picks for the, for the week. I'll usually go over that. So maybe what we'll do is I'll look at the books that came out this Wednesday – I'll just highlight a couple here that I liked. If my internet will work here. It's a little slow. I know that once in the future, I think that's up to like a fifth or sixth printing. That book's been really hot. Something is Killing the Children. That's been a really hot book. I think that's up to a fourth, third or fourth printing. I've been picking up most of the issues on that. Um, let me look at Marvel real quick. Oh, there's a couple Marvel books that came out. So Mortal Hulk. Um, the hot book is that Dale Keown Codex variant. I don't know if you guys have seen that or not. Um, that was a hot book. I probably should have bought it. I saw it on Midtown for $34, and I was like, eh. 
I got I got so many books this this month on my pull list. It's just like killing me. So I normally would probably would have bought that book, but it's just so many damn. I, I ordered way too many store exclusives in the last thirty days, so uh, I just I didn't pick it up. I'm not a huge fan of Dale Keown. I like the cover though because it shows him transforming into Venom, the Hulk. I mean, I think that is an important issue. Um, but yeah, I just I couldn't pull the trigger on it. Probably gonna regret it. it, it books going for like eighty eighty five dollars now. I think. I don't know. All right, Justin Regan, he's got to run. Thanks for joining the the live stream, man. I'm almost at six hundred. Am I really? Yeah, I'm getting up there. I'm not near. I think Justin Regan just hit nine hundred. So I'm still uh, I'm still in hot pursuit of that number. I'm not quite up to his his numbers all right what else we got here on the the agreement says Star, starsky and hutch was better <laughs> i do like how they slid across the car all the time right and how the doors didn't open they had to they had to jump through the window <laughs> manny says dude i'm so pissed off at midtown He had Edgar Allan Poe in my basket and went to check out and it was gone. Fucking sold out. Yeah, that's that uh Edgar Allan Poe shit. Yeah, I mean I've been pre-ordering that because I think the print runs on that are really low. Uh, Ahoy Comics does not do a lot. They do not they do not print a lot of books. So luckily I was able to pick up the original series, all of them. I got them all for cover price. And I think what'll end up happening is don't chase it on eBay. I think after a couple weeks, the price will come down. You'll probably be able to find it pretty close to cover on eBay. So don't sweat it. I think you'll be able to get it. All right. What else we got here in the chat? Uh, Comics Club says, uh, thanks for the sub. Comics with Thomas. I love when people are subbing each other on the chat. That's awesome. Yeah, so let's see here. <laughs> Thought Justin Regan said he had rum. <laughs> no, he had to run. He, he had to go run for some rum. Yes, that's right. I think so. Did uh, what came out first, Star Starsky or Hutch or Dukes of Hazard? Who came up with the running and jumping through the window <laughs> to get in the car? That would be a that would be a good thing to, to research. I don't know who who came up with that first. Comments Club said Dukes. <clears throat> That's probably true. I don't know. I don't know which show came out first. They were both shows from the seventies, weren't they? If I remember right, I remember Boss Hog, and what was it? His deputy. Pico Train. I can't remember his first name. I just remember he would always get pummeled by uh, Boss Hog, if I remember correctly. Perry's Comics says he's going to go get some rum. Nice. You don't remember them going out of windows? Yeah, Dukes of Hazard. Their doors will not open, and st same thing with Starsky and Hutch. They'll, their doors didn't open, so they would jump. They would jump out of the window, if I remember right. I believe that's correct. Welcome to the chat, Superpower Review. You drinking some whiskey and you're smoking cigars? Nice. I love when people join the live stream and they're doing the same thing I am. <laughs> they're drinking whiskey or some kind of adult beverage and they're smoking a cigar. I love that. So I'm already up to 40 minutes. Man, time goes fast. I haven't really even talked about much. Just kind of shooting the breeze here. So this summer has been really hot here in Florida. I haven't – one of the things I do recreationally is I, um, I I golf on occasion, but it's been so hot. I haven't golfed in a while, and I kind of look forward to the fall because the weather gets cooler, and I try to golf a little bit more. What I usually do is I'll 
I'll buy one of those Paradise Car. In Florida, they call them Paradise Cards. It gets you on a lot of courses for cheap, so I'll try to get out there and do a little golfing if I can when the weather gets a little bit better. Is that a TV <laughs> to the crack? It is. That is my 65-inch uh, Samsung TV. You're right. My living room's right there. <laughs> I think my wife's in there uh, with my kids watching probably some TV or something. Um, yeah, so they, they know on Thursday. They Usually Wednesdays and Thursdays I'll go on uh, usually and do a live stream. Uh, Wednesdays I go on with Metaphorical. We just do like a 10, 20-minute show. Usually I'm on there for maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then I'll do my own on Thursday. I think this is the third third time I've done this. So I'm trying to keep, be consistent with it. Every Thursday I'll try to do a whiskey, uh, cigars, and comic show. So I'm going to try to keep it keep it consistent. All right. What else? We I, the gray man says, I'm just casing the joint in Naples, Florida. 62-inch TV. What time will we be out of work? Do you have a dog? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a big freaking Rottweiler that I feed gunpowder. So if anybody tries in the house, he's extra angry. He'll 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 literally chew your asshole. <laughs> and and I'm usually home, and I have a nice 45. So come on in, man. We're ready for you. <laughs> uh. All right. Second Street Marvel. Thanks for coming to the joining the live stream. Ask away, guys. Do you have any questions that you want to ask me? You want my opinion on any book, any current book out right now? What I what I think of it? I'll tell you my favorite my favorite read right now. Um, with DC, it's deceased. That's my favorite read right now with DC. Um, I've kind of cooled on the Bendis stuff. I, I, Bendis, I like sometimes I like Bendis stuff, but I've not been into that event Leviathan. I think that's been pretty mediocre. Uh, Deceased has been my book of choice on DC. Uh, Marvel, uh, I've been enjoying the Car the Carnage series. It's been really good. Uh, Powers and House of X, definitely been really, really good. I've been enjoying that. Hickman, I've always known Hickman to be good. I've been collecting East of West since the beginning. So I know Hickman to be a good writer. Um, I'm glad that Marvel finally decided to pony up some money and put a good writer on X-Men. Um, all the previous writers, yeah, they just, I mean, X-Men hasn't been relevant besides this House of X and Powers of X. Claremont run, you know, maybe some people like the Grant Morrison run, you know, back in the day. I don't know. It just seems like Marvel's starting to kick it in gear. I, I can tell you, Marvel has a lot more books in the top 10, 20 list now than they've had in a long time. I'd say two years ago, DC dominated the top 10, top 20 list. Marvel dominates it now. So it's funny how the pendulum is always swinging. And sometimes independents do well. There's a lot of good independent titles out now as well. So, yeah, so Marvel, my best, I think Immortal Hulk, Silver Surfer Black, Carnage, Absolute Carnage has been great. House of X, Powers of X, fantastic. Um, image. I like Middle West. I like Middle West. I mean, it's it's not like groundbreaking, but it. I, I look forward to it every month. It's a good read. I like Middle West. I've been collecting that since the beginning. Uh, what else with uh, Spawn's been okay. Image. Eh. Walking Dead's over. I'm kind of glad that's over. I'm trying to think of another image book that I might I might be into. Independence. Comics. I've been saying this on my channel for a while. Vault Comics has some really, really good books. Heathen. Heathen is awesome. You've got to check out that um, comic series, Heathen. It's been out for a couple, yeah, a year and a half or so. To issue eight, they don't. They're not. They don't get their books out monthly. I'd say they're probably every other month, maybe every two months. Heathen is awesome. Um, These Savage Shores is really good. I really enjoy that title. So Vault has some really good books. I would say, as far as independents go, um, 
Vault's really good. Source Point Press has some really good books out. Um, Boom Boom Studios has been really um, a couple people agree with me. Heathen, Middle West. Yep. Die. I forgot about Die. That's right. Die's been good. I've been uh, Dead Kids. That's been really good, right? We're only up to issue three now. I've been enjoying that. Really good. Um, I was early on that too. I bought exclusive covers. I bought issue one, issue two. Um, I pre-ordered all that shit. So yeah, I was I was on that. I was telling people on my channel, go to Black Cape Comics, pick up those Esteban Salinas covers. Freaking blown up. You talk about limited. Most of those covers are issue what maybe a hundred print run on those copies. They're all like triple triple what they what you could have bought them for off their site. So that's been a really, really good pickup. Yeah, Vault. What else is going on, man? Um, oh, the plot. I haven't read that yet. I've got, I think that I'm going to get that this weekend. I had that pre-ordered on my Midtown order. I've heard good things about it. It's a good horror, uh, horror comic. Um, I bought all three covers. I really, man, I like that B cover, that homage to House of Secrets 92, and I really like that C cover by, I think, Tim Daniel, I think, is the guy that did that. That's really good. Yeah. All right, we're at 47 minutes. Probably going to end this pretty soon. I usually want to keep these around 30 to 45 minutes. Um, I got 11 people checking out the stream, so that's pretty good. I think after I'm on that show with Jim's Comics on Tuesday – when I do these cigar whiskey cigar and comics uh, episodes, it's probably going to be two to three times uh, people watching this, so that'll be good. So again, check that out on Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Not sure of the time yet. I'll post that on Instagram. I'll probably do a video highlighting it as well. Uh, I should have that firmed up by the weekend, um, coordinating with Jim and Esteban. Uh, I think we settled on Tuesday. I'm just not too sure of the time yet. It might be... It might be 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It might be 9 p.m. It might be 10. I'm not too sure, but I'll let you guys know um, as soon as I can, probably this weekend. But that's it. Um, yeah, I appreciate everybody that uh, was on the chat, all the great comments. Uh, everybody, have a great evening. And, hey, look for my video tomorrow, Friday. I do a um, – a hot 10 list from CBSI. So I do review of that list and usually Saturday morning uh, early, I post a, a top 20 list from cover price books that are kind of, uh, moving for that week. So look for that, those videos Friday and Saturday morning. All right, guys have a great week and I'll see you soon.